Hi, I am Mandeep from Ria College. My project is based on private blockchain and banking industry. We'll see how blockchain can provide a suitable solution to some leading challenges faced by banking industry globally. The project targets two problems that is eliminating the repeated process of document verification and fastening the loan processing. To describe more about the issue, if you attempt to open two bank accounts in two different banks, you'll notice a common process of document verification and KYC. The problem stems from the fact that these are repeated every time, and the entire process, although regulated requirement, is potentially expensive to banks and uh, customer resources. <coughs> Globally, the KYC and other requirements cost heavily to banking industry, as in this survey from 2016 by Thomas Reuters. The same symptoms are observed in the case of loan approval mechanism in banking. Although most of the process is common, it is riddled with human and computer intervention, it requires piles of documents and financial history of previous borrowings, etc. In both the examples, we see that there is a plenty of room to reduce this redundancy and make banks more interoperable. The first idea that comes to our mind is, why can't banks have a centralized database containing all the documents, information and share this information among them. It's a well thought idea in an ideal world, but realistically it suffers from the problems of centralized architecture, precisely problems such as single point of failure. It raises some questions as why should bank trust the centralized system as it's highly susceptible from malicious actors. To sum up, we require a system that acts like a centralized system does not suffer from the single point of failure and provides a trustless security mechanism where every minute action is recorded and every bank gets to own its data, view history of all transactions committed by the peer banks. Blockchain fills this gap perfectly. It provides the platform to share information among the trustless entities or peers where each entity has a copy of entire history also by being cryptographically impenetrable. Now let's solve this problem by embracing principles of the blockchain. I have built a private blockchain that is assumed to be held by a consortium of banks wherein all banks uh, that are part of the consortium agree on sharing information related to the documents and loan transaction. We primarily have two purposes to enable access to documents and loan related transaction poses a private blockchain that is operated by a consortium of banks which serves as a platform for sharing information related to client documents and online transactions. This information enables banks to take faster decisions. For example, if you submit your document for verification and then after verification your bank will push this information to the blockchain. So in future when you attempt to open a new bank account in a bank that is part of the consortium, you don't have to go through the process all over again. With your digital signature, the bank can access your information on blockchain and reduce the waiting time. The blockchain consists of two types of blocks, a document block and a transaction block. We'll explore about the structure of the blocks in depth in future. Moving on to the implementation. Each bank implements these three parts to explain in simplest words. The client communicates with the server. It provides the information such as documents, information related to loan transactions and the server validates this information, carries forward it to the blockchain full node. The full node analyzes this information and broadcasts the same information to other full nodes. Now we are ready to move on to the application. Here we see that two blockchains are running in the background. This is the project dashboard. These are the two banks. Let's select one. A note that these two banks are part of a some bank consortium. Within this dashboard, we can create a new client 
let's call it we can upload some document a document ID is something that uniquely identifies that document like Aadhaar card or PAN card suppose this is our uh, document obviously this document is empty for now but just submit it now this document is stored in our web server and the meta information about the document is pushed to the blockchain let's add some trans uh, transaction related to loan about this client called as Rahul suppose we grant Rahul about 1000 loan and suppose Rahul pays 100 as EMI on time and then suppose he bounces the next EMI payment of 400 and suppose he defaults the payment ultimately of remaining 900 rupees let's plus this transaction to the blockchain now now we can view these transactions with the Rahul in the dashboard these are the sequence of transactions that ha that happened uh, on Rahul's account first the loan was granted above 1000 then he paid his first EMI he bounced his second EMI and ultimately defaulted his loan by this information the its peer bank can judge the client whether to grant, a, grant him a loan if so then what should be the interest depending on his credit score that can be computed from the available information and now the same information can be accessed on Spear Bank too let's see how so we added Rahul as part of this ABI bank now we will explore the same from the city bank so we can view transactions of let's see this note actually the client's digital signature is required for viewing transaction or accessing any information but for simplicity i have uh, ignored that step now let's understand the internal implementation of the blockchain program the blockchain is built with kotlin which is a jvm based language using kato framework and java cryptography library Let's start with the blockchain data class that is, a, that is simply a list of blocks and the blocks consists of two types as stated earlier an important takeaway is that the signature of bank as well as the clients are present in the blocks this is there to prevent cases of non-repudiation and prevent banks from accessing users document without permission also uh, one thing that is to be noticed as the document hash the document doesn't actually contain the document but contain its hash its checksum value let's understand how the blockchain works and how they communicate the blockchain program is executed by all the banks that are part of the consortium this is done by running a fat jar file this is the jar file these two Upon initialization, it will request all the peer banks their copy of blockchain and adopt the chain with highest number of nodes. When new transactions are added, they are broadcasted to the peer nodes which append those new transactions. The blockchain is stored in serialized JSON format over local disk, making it portable and easily accessible. This is the JSON file that is that contains all the transactions uh, happening in the background. Similarly, the web server is built with Node.js and Express framework with crypto library as a crypto library for cryptography. It stores private and public keys of the bank as well as for the clients 
This was a small overview of the project, just tip of the iceberg. Feel free to check out the project in depth over my GitHub repository. Thank you.